Well, it is a pleasure to be in Portugal again. I was at Yapsi Lisbon last year, and that was kind of good fun as well. Uh, this talk is called Iron Man, and the reason for this is this talk comes from the Iron Man, the Enlightened Pearl Blogging Iron Man competition. Uh, that was announced originally last year at the Nordic Pearl Workshop, although um, I did talk about it again at Yapsi NA, and then in a slightly more restrained fashion at Yapsi EU, um, due to Jesse Vincent being an evil, evil man, <coughs> and betting me that I, could give, that I couldn't give all of my conference presentations without swearing. That was interesting when giving a lightning talk, most of which was swearing. But the point of Iron Man, the point of Iron Man is to get the Pearl community out and up and blogging, out and visible on Google. We're great at IRC, we're great at mailing lists, but those don't drop into the aggregators. You can't really Reddit a mailing list post. And we need to be more visible because we've been doing so much cool stuff, but so many people don't know about it. So, as an extra incentive to try and get some of the old men of Pearl to come up and do things, I said, hey! If you join in this competition, I'm going to be posting once a week as well, and if I miss a post, I get to do a forfeit. Better still, you guys will get to vote for it. And just around the first anniversary of Iron Man, I missed a post. So, they got to vote for a hair colour. Stephen Little, creator of Moose, created a campaign to vote for Transparent, because Stephen was trying to get me to shave my head. <laughs> the man's envious, he's got male pattern baldness, pity the guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I went, well, uh, what can I do with transparent? Uh, well, the polar bear, a polar bear is white, right? Mm. But a polar bear's fur is transparent. So what we're working on is, for Yatsi this year, get my hair as close to white as possible. Because the only alternative I had to a hair colour was clothes colour. <laughs> And I didn't think that Yatsi would be amazingly impressed with that. Not after Indy already did that to them one year. <laughs> they also got to vote for the talk title. The thing is, I got eight titles proposed. I got eight titles proposed, all of which were lovingly and carefully designed to screw me over. <laughs> and then nobody, not a single person, voted for the same title. So the only thing that I can possibly do is give one talk with all eight titles. <laughs> so, welcome to Iron Man. <laughs> Title one, initial design notes for Pearl 7. <laughs> well, Pearl 7, hang on, I, are we missing something here? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I've got one basic idea about Pearl 7. Let's not have a Pearl 7. <laughs> not, because, not, not, not because I don't want to see another version of Pearl. We've already got two Pearl languages coming up, and they're both brilliant. But the main reason is version numbers suck. The amount of marketing trouble that we've had from the whole five versus six thing. Because, oh, this number's bigger than that one, so this must mean, and that must mean, and no, 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 no. And I've got in Pearl 5. Pearl 5 is a language with a fantastic culture. We have a culture of collaboration. We have a culture of reusable code. But most of all, we have a culture of being dumb. And certainly in the UK, I think it's a culture of being dumb and down the pub, right? Uh, Pearl 6, on the other hand, Pearl 6 has a culture of taking its time and trying to get it exactly right, and, well, you know, perfection has a slight drawback, you know? Uh, in that it, it's kind of difficult to achieve in any limited period of time. Uh, but, okay, that doesn't really explain the two languages properly. Uh, so let's try again. Well, how about Pearl 5 is... Uh, a robust production language, Perl 5 is designed to be something that you can use, use to get the job done as a programmer. Perl 6 is, Perl 6 is a language designer's playground. It's possibly the best thing ever for language designers. Look at the grammar stuff. You can turn the language into anything. And that's fantastic. But also, they've been coming up with lots of great ideas. So even if there's never a working version of Perl 6, I claim it's an absolute success as a project because the rest of the world can steal stuff from it. They've come up with some great ideas. I mean, if you look at uh, Musex Declare, we stole most of the syntax from Perl 6. Musex Multi-Methods, the algorithm we literally stole from Makuna. J 
Jonathan Worthington sat down with the Moose guys to help out in return for the Moose guys giving uh, the Rikudo guys some guidance on what Moose had done that Rikudo um, hadn't yet. And it's, it's great, but the, like I say, numbers confuse people. The whole five and six thing is the biggest obstacle to marketing pearl that we have today, I think. Um, and I, I'm wondering, why don't we go for names instead of numbers? These are two languages in the same family. Uh, so, you know, Larry once said, Pearl 5 is a velociraptor. I love that quote. For what I mean, seriously, it is. Giant and thing with huge amounts of teeth. Um, so, what about Raptor Pearl for Pearl 5, Camellia Pearl for Pearl 6? Camellia's been their mascot for years. It's all over the Pearl 6 website. They're already completely happy with that one. And if we start talking about that, then maybe we can get this whole five and six rubbish out of people's heads. And we won't have to keep arguing about Pearl 5 being dead or Pearl 6 not being done. Because it, it's all rubbish. They're two fantastic programming languages. And I'm glad they both exist. And I'm looking forward to years of them stealing from each other. Uh, you know, the, the Raptor thing. Raptor is great for Pearl 5. You charge in, you kill the problem, you leave for the pub. <laughs> this, this is what we do, this is great. You're done, the business guys are happy, the code works. Uh, I, I've seen projects to try and replace Pearl with um, Java, and they've had two years now, and the Java version still doesn't get more than a quarter of the request per second of the Pearl Demon that it's supposed to obsolete. The Pearl Demon's done, it's been done for years, it works, it's fantastic. Uh, butterfly, Butterfly, well, <laughs> I don't know, I, Every, every, every time I see Camellia, I think this would make a really great mascot for a show aimed at five-year-olds. But, you know, the, 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 Pearl, the Pearl Six guys, they have this whole thing of being kind and friendly and gentle and huggy. And they, their whole community ethos reflects that. And Camellia is perfect for that. It, it, reflects the, it reflects the whole thing of being together and, you know, they, it, it, it flutters around. Um, this week we have an object system whose base object is object. Next week, Larry's going to go, aha, I've invented something called Moo. Um, I've, I've asked like 12 people now, and nobody seems to know what Moo is, but um, in Larry we trust. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I have no idea what he's doing, but I'm not going to second guess it, because I've spent the past 10 years using the last language he designed. So I, clearly he must have some idea. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe Pearl 7 could be both of those, yeah? A uh, raptor and a butterfly. How do we... I guess we could have a vampire butterfly. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, flutters in in the night, sucks all the blood and maybe funding out of your management, and then I don't know. Uh, but you know, this is this is the thing, though. Uh, one of the uh, early Unix guys said the two hardest problems in computer science are what to name things and what to catch. And the, you know. Um, the problem of naming things is where the whole design patterns movement came from. Design patterns aren't a guide to how to implement things. Design patterns are a set of common terms to name things, so we've got names for things, so we can talk about them more easily. Which brings me on to Title 2. NBC from Pac-Man to Django. <laughs> so, Pac-Man. Everybody remembers Pac-Man, right? And those of you who've forgotten, you know, a week or so ago, Google completely destroyed your productivity by reminding us. <laughs> <laughs> it was epic. I don't know if anybody noticed, but if you clicked insert coin, you actually got two player mode. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, but um, game programming. I, I guess a lot of us did game programming when we were younger. I, I, I remember the great fun of doing a bit blip loop on, um, on the Archimedes, very early ARM chips. They, they were risk. 16 instructions, literally, that was it. Uh, beautiful uh, piece of hardware, never mind. Um, and then Intel happened to them. But Kesera, uh, it could have been worse, they could have been bought by Oracle, right? Um, but no, Patna, Patna, the game is you have an input loop. Your input loop is the thing that handles uh, key presses. You have a render loop which repaints the screen and blitz from one buffer to the other. And then you have a store of object positions. And oddly enough, I'd say that this makes Pac-Man more NBC than most web applications. Because you've got your input, that's your controller code, you've got your rendering, that's your view code, and you've got your state, and that's your model code. So I, actually, Pac-Man is NBC. Now, uh, the concept of NBC came out of the small talk research. Uh, Xerox Park, you know, the, um, 
stuff that um, Bill Gates stole from Badly and uh, Steve Jobs stole from Effectively. Um, and so Small Dog NBC was based on the observer pattern. The idea being that you've got a notification on change of state of objects. Um, so the view observes the model, so the view could update what was on the screen when the uh, logic, logic changed. There's your replay loop. Um, and the controller has to observe the view and the model. Uh, now, okay, Pac-Man didn't need that bit because in Pac-Man your input was up, down, left and right. Uh, you know, you, you didn't even have a fire button. Although really, wouldn't Pac-Man with a machine gun be awesome? <laughs> No, I'm not sure how we hold it. <laughs> anyway, uh, but no, uh, NBC, you're, um, what you need to do is, if somebody put it, the reason you have to observe the view and the model is for a mouse click. Um, because if the pointer's over a button, um, or over a text box, then the view can tell you where it is, but the model, can the model is what can tell you whether it's valid to click there, whether the thing's active. Um, so moving on to Django, which suffers from the great problem that HTTP is stateless, which makes it kind of hard to do that sort of thing. Um, Django doesn't have a controller at all. I think Django considers the browser to be its controller. Um, so Django, basically, you have URLs, view code, and model code. And that's great. And then it has a form system. And the form system is part rendering logic and um, part updating the model logic. So Form, general forms are kind of part view, part controller. And I mean, this is all wrong according to traditional MVC. Um, but the thing is, Django was designed for content sites. The um, original newspaper company that Django came out of, the, they, they wrote Django to write all the front end sites in, and all the back office stuff was Mod Pearl, Gantry, and DBIX Glass. Seriously, I, I, I got drunk with uh, the Gentry and Django guys at the Roscon one year. They're all fantastic. Um, so, in, for a content site, you don't really have much user updating. It's all about display stuff. So, content sites are mostly view and model anyway. And, you know, Django is very good for producing pretty sites. Uh, okay, it's pretty, but it's architecturally unsound. But. Uh, if it satisfies the business requirements, then I'm not sure that's necessarily a problem. Which brings us to title number three. Because title number three is PHP is the future of web development. And PHP, hypertext preprocessor. Uh, alternative acronym. <laughs> uh, Rasmus Lerdorf. Rasmus Lerdorf um, wrote a little um, horrible Perl CGI script, uh, which eventually got written as a horrible piece of C code. Um, and he quite openly says that he hates programming. He, he can't stand it. Programming is something he wants to be out of the way and done. He has no love for it at all. And you can kind of see this in PHP. But the, but the thing is, Rasmus likes making things pretty. Rasmus likes making good user interfaces. That's what he's focused on. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, MVK, Dark Keating. Uh, my business partner at Shadowcat. Um, the person at Shadowcat who actually knows how to make things pretty. I just make stuff work. Um, you can tell how, how much um, I am uh, making things pretty by the slide system. Uh, but um, Mark, the reason we first started working together is because Mark didn't want to become a programmer. I didn't want to become a designer, so we went, well, let's collaborate. Uh, eight years, five years of incorporation, five years of Shadowcat later, it seems to kind of work. And Mark's been doing the design work for the Shadowcat side, for the, for the Enlightened Pearl stuff, for the new presentingpearl.org, where I'm hoping the wonderful people at this workshop will let me upload the videos later. Um, and, you know, maybe we need more people who hate programming. Because, you know, uh, the Pearl community as a whole, sheer as hell, doesn't seem to be very good at pretty. Not thinking of any websites in particular. Uh, and I've, I've, I've heard of shops that have gone for they have a Java server that encapsulates the business logic, XML RPC interface, and then PHP talking to it. And so the PHP UI people can write whatever horrible code they like to make the UI pretty, and then it talks to the Java backend. I also know of a number of companies doing the same thing very successfully with Catalyst as the server, uh, using controller REST or server XML RPC or whatever. Um, and it, it really does work. 
it lets the UI guys focus on the UI. The fact that it's not architecturally pure, it doesn't matter. The business logic is in a different process on a different server. And as long as that's solid, who cares? You know, um, okay. The important things about a business site is that it's pretty, that it's actually usable for people, and that it's robust. But if you can separate the robust out to somewhere else, then, you know, uh, architectural purity. Who cares? Well, you, you, your, your customer doesn't know whether you use good object-oriented design. They care whether when they click, the right thing happens. Somebody goes onto their friends list, whatever. Um, and I think, I think we need to remember that when it comes to code that's exposed to humans, it's usability over purity. Code should be written for other humans to, exit, to read and only incidentally for a computer to run. UI should be built for people to use and only incidentally to make the programmer happy. Um, so I reckon that usable is the future of web development. And if you look at, say, WordPress compared to, I don't know, every Perl blogging platform ever, the PHP guys seem to be ahead of us on usable as the future. Okay, uh, I'm sorry I don't have a link for this one. It appears to not be found. Never mind. Title 4. Title 4 is fun. Apparently I'm supposed to tell you about raising ferrets for food. So, uh, yeah. Well, I had to research this one. <laughs> Um, because I have no idea about ferrets. Um, I still have very little idea about ferrets. Uh, fortunately, Wikipedia helped a little bit. Um, and the answer is you can't. Really. They, they, they are small, fuzzy predators that... No. <laughs> but they apparently make great pets. Um, they make great rat killers. Um, I couldn't really... Uh, um, oh yes, uh, ferrets have scent glands. You, you have to actually have the scent glands removed. And then as long as you don't upset it, um, it won't pee everywhere and your house probably won't stink. Uh, great pet, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, well, I, I, okay, there's rats. So maybe we could eat the rats? Uh, well, <laughs> thing is, I used to hang out on Oxys Admin Recovery. Uh, which is a wonderful news group full of mad cis admins ranting about everything but work. Um, and one of them kept ferrets, he used to refer to them as his fuzzies. And he used to say, ah, see fuzzy eat rat, see fuzzy play with rat. See fuzzy looks sad because toy broke. <laughs> and by broke he means there be bits of rat everywhere over his house. <laughs> so I guess we can't eat the rats. Um, so I was looking through the um, Wikipedia page some more. Apparently, because they're small, thin, and fast moving, if you tie a cable to one foot and get it to run through a tunnel, you can use a ferret to run a cable. So I have a plan. How do we get? How do we get the food source out of ferrets? You raise the ferret. You train the ferret to run cables, and then you use the ferret to run a dedicated fiber link to the nearest pizza place, <laughs> and then you can order pizza. And lo, your ferret has helped you have a food source. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, okay, uh, title five. Title five was, Why Module Build is Better Than XUtils Note Maker. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, you see, this is funny because first, I really hate module build. Second, um, I'm an occasional committer to module install, which is an XUtils make maker wrapper that a lot of us use. Um, I actually am probably the person who spends their most time with the head in the guts of module auto install, which handles the um, install dependency stuff. Worse still, as of this summer, it appears I volunteered to maintain XUtils make maker. <laughs> So, yes, thank you. I now have to tell you why a module I'm about to take over is failed and why you shouldn't use it. So, uh, okay, I've not started yet, though, so it's not my fault it sucks. In six months, it will be my fault. Um, but, okay, well, make maybe you can sort of write meta.yml, um, but it doesn't yet handle the new meta standard. Uh, version 2.0 that's come out that allows JSON and Mitchie Keys. Module build handles that beautifully. Um, XUtils Make Maker doesn't like my meta yet. 
and my measure is the only way we have of providing reliable metadata on a machine uh, for what dependencies a module has. Uh, module build, it's a fantastic author side tool. You can run build test cover. It automatically invokes devil cover for you and gives coverage results. That's genius. Uh, you can, it's got a test pod target. So you don't have to bother with this stupid t slash zero zero coverage. You just run build test pod before you ship your desk. And that's great. And it's even got build install apps to install dependencies for you. Now, okay, module installers make install apps. I should know this. That's the thing powered by auto install. Um, the other good thing about module build is, because it's all build, it doesn't need a make binary. Uh, which for, you know, those people uh, afflicted with Windows is actually kind of useful. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. Um, although there is an interesting project called MakePP, uh, which is a pure build compatible re-implementation of Gmail. And I hope, I hope that we can get Xutils MakeMaker to support that. Um, at which point we can bundle a copy of make PP and Xutils make making this will also install without a make binary. Uh, we'll see. Um, okay, module build is actively maintained, whereas Xutils make maker has very much been in maintenance mode for a couple of years. Uh, you know, module build has had new features added this century, uh, which Xutils make maker, well, it has, but nothing major. Uh, the, the thing is, Xutils make maker was maintained by Schwern. Schwern is a masochist. Schwern hates make. He's been maintaining a make file generator, and he hates make files. Uh, you, you kind of see why it's not been advancing very much at this point. I do have to say that Schwern is a wonderful masochist, because he's still been maintaining it, in spite of hating it, simply for the fact that he knew the Perl community needed it. So I can't really fault him for that. Um, fortunately, though, I actually like make. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've worked with Module Install, which already does most of the things we'd like to see MakeMaker do. So, uh, hopefully, if I can get past the madness of the ordinary 10 code in there, I can steal some of it. Um, and this seller, um, RJBS's system, generates makefile.plt for you, which, again, works around about 95% of the problems with MakeMaker. Um, and more importantly, because I care about this, because I actually want to see this code move forward. What I'm planning to do is build a community around MakeMaker. I mean, before I ever said to Schwern, yes, I'll take it, I made sure I had at least half a dozen people who were going to volunteer to help. I I'm sorry, I don't do things on my own. What I do is shout, well, volunteer, and run down the pub. Everybody should know this by now, right? Um, and if we have an active community around it, of people who care about Perl, and people who care about Make, and people who care about C, I think we can get somewhere. Which brings me on to Title 6. And Title 6 is Patches Welcome. Now, this one was proposed because those of you who have been watching Iron Man recently will have seen that there was a bunch of stuff um, about, oh, Patches Welcome is a bad thing to say, you have to get it, oh. And you, have to, you must support your software. If you don't support software you release, you're a bad programmer and you should never release it. I, or at least, uh, Zeno, well, uh, I think he's actually Zeno Terracide, but that's way more accurate. Um, so, yeah, uh, one guy will hate you if, um, never mind. Uh, I'll, 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 give, I'll give the guy his credit, he maintains hundreds of Perl modules for Arch Linux, and he's still a student, so I think when he grows up a bit, it'll be lovely. Um, <laughs> But anyway, he, he talks about open source contribution as being volunteer work. So, you know, you volunteer, you volunteer to be an owner, a releaser, a maintainer, and a supporter. Well, no, not all open source contribution is volunteer work. Joining the community and actively helping support stuff, yes, that is. But shipping your code, saying, I put this out here, if it's useful to you, great. That's a donation. Donations are allowed to be one-off. Okay, most charities, if you donate to them once, will then send you a letter every month trying to convince you that donations can't be one of. But, yeah, you know. Um, so, uh, the term patch is welcome. In Xeno Terracide's head, patch is welcome means I don't have time, or I don't care, or I don't think it'll work, or, well, really, I think Xeno Terracide says that patch is welcome means that. And I think he's wrong, but I propose. Instead of saying patches welcome, 
We adopt instead the sound that normally presages me or Tom Doran or Florian Magnets or Peter Rabbits and or a dozen other open source project leads giving out a commitment, which is the word well volunteer. Well volunteer is much better than patches welcome because what well volunteered means is you're going to have to do it because we can't, we don't have time or it's not a feature that is important to us. But the important thing is you're saying well volunteered, you're saying this is good, you're saying that we as a community do care about this and we will help you do it. Um, and the, you know, the traditional thing that you will see on IRC is somebody's met with a plus plus fire and well volunteer. And about three times out of four, the patches turn up and they are very welcome indeed. So, uh, in the spirit of really bad links, title plus plus, title seven. <laughs> title seven is Apple the Devil Incarnate. Uh, and in fact, Apple is so evil, they stole one of his titles votes. Somebody um, tried to put in a second vote for it, um, which would have made this the winner. Unfortunately, because he was talking about Apple being evil, he didn't have the word Pearl in his post, so it didn't go into the Iron Man aggregator and didn't get counted. Ah, uh, well, I, I argue it's funnier this way anyway. Uh, at least for you, maybe not for me. Um, no, I will say, I, I love my iPod. It, it's a beautiful piece of equipment. It's a great media device. Um, I wouldn't want it to be my phone, though. My phone is a Nokia. My phone is an M900 because it runs Linux. It has a command prompt. I have root. I have apt get. This device is a crucial computing device to me. I want to be able to control it. And, um, you know, walled gardens are horrible. If, if I wanted to be trapped in a tiny world where I can only do the official things, you know, I had an opportunity ten years ago to become a Visual Basic developer. Um, uh, I lasted four days at that and then managed to get myself switched to Perl. <laughs> Happy. Anyway. Um, and Apple have shown over time that patches aren't necessarily welcome. Uh, WebKit effectively became a fork of KHTML because while they published their work, they wanted control of the project. So over time, um, Apple didn't feed things back in such a way that the KHTML team could merge it. And in the end, KHTML as a project died, and WebKit became the um, version of the rendering engine that people contributed to. So, you know, Apple is all about the control. Um, although if you, talk, if you talk to the Apple fanboys, one could also argue that it's all about the taste of Steve Jobs' penis. Um, the, 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 the thing I really hate about OSX, though, is it's... It's got Unix certification. It's got a mostly BSD user load. And it has the worst X11 support of any operating system I've ever used. Windows has better X windows. Look, X windows. This is freaking Windows Vista. Apple, you, you can't get focus follows mouse. There is one true, there is one true way, and it, it must be the Apple way. And I, I, I just can't deal with this. I don't want their opinions thrust upon me. I, 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 I don't want there is one true way and you must do that. Um, for those of you who love that, I recommend an iBook and a copy of Python. So, yeah, okay. Um, but Apple is very tempting, Apple is very pretty, and therefore lots of people are buying into the world garden. And all I can really say to that is, well, if you want to buy into it, buy into it. But you are being tempted by the devil incarnate. Um, but the other thing that makes Apple successful is their understanding of how people interact with things, which is going to bring me to Title 8. Cognitive science to improve HTML Zoom usability. Uh, well, here's the problem. I don't really know anything about cognitive science. Uh, I know almost as little of, well, I actually know more about ferrets now. Um, <laughs> Uh, about all I know about it is from a lightning talk that MDK gave at the last Northwest England Burlongers meet. Um, and the lightning talk would mostly seem to be about psychologists and mean to kittens. Seriously, right? What, what they did was, in order to test how this stuff works, they raised a bunch of cats in a room with only horizontal bars. And they raised a bunch of other cats in a room with only vertical bars. And the way the cat's brain develops, the ones raised in horizontal bars can't see vertical bars. 
and the ones raised with vertical bars can't see horizontal bars. So what happens when you move a cat into a cage with the other sorts of bars? <laughs> Concussed cat. <laughs> bang! 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 And, you know... So, um, based on that, um, my proposal for making HTML Zoom easier for programmers to use with cognitive science is <coughs> rotate the programmer 90 degrees sideways. Maybe you won't see the bars then. Uh, uh, more realistically, on a previous note, what it probably means is a document to come and rewrite my docs. Uh, I, I do better with code, never mind. Um, so, uh, conclusions of this talk. Um, since they told me yesterday lunchtime after I'd written it that they scheduled it as the keynote, um, thank you very much, Portuguese organisation, brilliant as always. <laughs> um, but I, I thought I should have some conclusions. So my conclusions are, Perl 7 should be written in PHP because it makes about as much sense as rewriting PHP as a C++ compiler, right? So maybe Facebook will release Perl 7 in five years. Um, Pac-Man needs more ferrets because really, I mean, they are vicious little creatures. You know, uh, st st stop having, stop having Pac-Man go around trying to eat the ghosts. Eat the blue pill. Release the ferrets. <laughs> Be great. Maybe we can, ah, ferrets have arms. We can give the ferrets the machine guns. There we go. Um, ACU feels make make. It needs a lot of love and a lot more patches, but we're going to work on that. And finally, cognitive science should probably be left to Apple. Um, or at least not to me. Mm. Uh, well, we're now a little over a year into Iron Man. We're still getting new sign-ups. I would love to see a few of you on there. Remember, Iron Man is about blogging about things that Pearl people find interesting. You don't have to blog just about Pearl. You can blog about stuff you found that was cool that you think other pearl mongers will like. You can blog about stuff that you just think is cool full stop. There's probably going to be somebody fascinated by it. You don't have to blog in English. We have bloggers in Russian, bloggers in Japanese, bloggers in... We have bloggers in all sorts of languages and I don't know any of them. But I, I'm really glad they're doing it because there's lots of people who do know that and are going to read it. Um, I'm not sure we've got many um, people blogging in Portuguese yet, so maybe you guys can fix that, right? Um, and next year I think there will be some sort of other Iron Man challenge to reward the next batch of mad people who signed up and joined me. Um, I have absolutely no idea what, but get out there and get blogging and next year you'll have a chance to find out. Thank you very much.